I compared myself and I'm like, I can't, I'm sorry. These beans are banned. Life of a YouTuber. Potato garbanzo beans. Chickpeas. You can't be a broke vegan. Or like I, like I say, cold tofurkey. Whatever niche you choose, just make sure you can create 200 videos out of that. Life of a normal jelly. Mm -hmm. Of a normal jelly. Of a normal yes. jelly? A normal jelly. Normal we jelly. have one normal jelly here. There are abnormal ones, but this one's normal. <laughs> All right, let's get into it. Into jelly? <laughs> what? Let's, no, let's this get into a big bathtub of, of jelly. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we have, is it, is it, is it, so we still do intros, man? Do we still do like, hey, he, he finds find something. He crubs together or something. Really? Do, do, you, do we like introducing, introducing people that doesn't matter? Okay, that's what I thought. We don't have to do the whole, oh, like, we have yeah, here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you know, you know. If you know, you know. I mean, we can either way. Yeah. Well, thank you for having, thank you for having us here at your beautiful home. Oh, um. yes. Um, as you see, I installed this new moss thing. It's beautiful. Um, I kind of hate it, but whatever. What? You know, I'll probably you get rid of it. it. No, I'm kidding. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, speaking of homes, I heard you're getting a home. Um, yes. Yeah, so I'm in the process. It's not technically mine yet, um, but I am in the process of trying to get a home. Um, yeah, I'm really excited. It's when you say it's not yours yet, you mean it's like the banks? It's like no, it, I haven't on it, signed any papers yet. Right. Gotcha. Yeah. So but you're I done competing with people. It's yours. Mm, so it's like I have a deposit for it. So it's technically mine, but I could tomorrow say, "Hey, oh, never mind. You can I don't say want back it." Out. Okay. Yeah. Are you going to back out? Or are you? No, no. I think I want it. <laughs> That's cool. I actually think it's a pretty decent time to buy, considering interest rates are supposedly going to go down this year. I think prices will come back up because I think everyone's going to get the same idea and be like, cool, now's the time to buy. Dude, you have no idea how much interest rates have gone down from the beginning of my process to now. So basically kind of to put it like this. So when I first applied, I qualified, I qualified for 7.125 interest rate. Wow. And then we did it again. It went down to 6.125. Oh and now I'm at a 5.875. Oh, wow. And the that's just, and it's, and I'm not done. So I'm going to see if my lender can Dang. check again to yeah. see if it's going to go down anymore or not. Right. But damn, that's like a, that's what, insane. one and a half. -ish? That's insane. So are you locked in already what? or you're not locked in just yet on the interest rate? Um, yes, I am. You are. But I mean, then I can still bring it down. Okay. I think. Yeah, you're following you can, macroeconomics. Why is it going down so fast? It doesn't feel like a normal. Well, it's going down so fast because interest rates, they're always forward looking. So interest rates are just taking into account that interest rates will go down and they are lower now. Um, but yeah, the Fed's telling us the lower rates this year. So we'll see. Yeah, I'm definitely looking to buy down the rate later, like yeah. the interest rate. If it goes down like a significant sure. amount, then yes, I'll, I'll try again. Later That's really cool. And later. then you started a new channel too. Yeah, Norma Jelly's second channel. Tell yes. us all about it. So this one's called Life of a Norma Jelly. And the reason I started it was because I just felt like there was so many things I couldn't show on my main channel because at, at a, basically my first channel is like a travel channel. I treat it like very, professionally and there's people who are like oh my god can you please show my place and it's something that I'm like what would I even put it in so I decided okay let's start a second channel I'm gonna it's more of a lifestyle channel really so it's more about like my life as a youtuber living in Las Vegas and I just kind of take you along with me and and I've said it's like like for example a restaurant all the way out by like boulder city or something like that yeah there's not a lot of people who are tourists who are gonna go all the way over there because just because it's far you know so at least i have mm. another place to show it off at and not just that like like i don't know i just want to show off like behind the scenes right so if you had to well. describe the difference in the two audiences is one for less visitors of las vegas and the other ones are for people who care about you personally kind of yeah well so the thing too is that so like, for example, I really love New York and I'll watch creators from there just because I want to see New York and I want to see them mm -hmm. live their life there because I always kind of wish I could live there. So I'm sure there's people who just want to see Las Vegas. So it's like, all right, here's a more what it's like to live here. Right. Type of like channel. a realistic perspective behind the scenes. What are mm -hmm. some of the more interesting invites that you got that you couldn't put on your main channel? Oh, dang. So like, for example, um, just one that's come up to my mind. I did a video uh, where I, I got hired by 
what, what is her name? Agua Caliente. Agua so Agua Caliente okay. is a casino in Palm Springs, and they happen to come here to Vegas, and they were in the uh, cigar, like cigar convention. I forget what the actual name of it is, but they wanted me to like go there and show it off. But in my head, it's like, why would I put mm. this in my first channel? It's a convention once a year that like, like why, w- why would Vegas, anybody yeah. go to this in a sense? So I was like, all right, let me show it off on my second channel. And I did. And yeah. it, it worked out. They liked it. They were happy. That's cool. That's so cool. now you get much more freedom, flexibility. Mm-hmm. You can kind of like be your true self a little bit more. Kind of, yeah. And there's a lot of restaurant openings. So for example, I don't usually like to show off a restaurant unless I've tried it first. Because mm-hmm. uh, what if it's not good? Mm-hmm. You know, so at least I can show off all these restaurant openings that I get invited to. And then I kind of give like a real re- review of like, oh, this was good. This was it. Like, you know, and then from there, I, I kind of gave them their exposure. And then later on, I could decide, oh, I'll put it on the main channel too right. later. Have you ever been paid to do a review for any restaurants or hotels? Uh, yes. I actually got paid by Sahara. Okay. And I got paid by, um, oh, what is it called? It, it was a hotel out in Reno. They actually oh. flew me out. They flew out um, my co-host Lydia. And yeah, they paid for the whole stay. Everything was comped. And yeah. So How does that cool. affect like your reviews? If you're like, oh, these guys paid me. Is there like a contractual obligation or agreement to be like, well, these guys sponsored me to come here. So I have to like give a positive review or. Um, so I think I, I don't like to give negative reviews. So as we're there, mm-hmm. if there's something we don't like, we send it back. So. There, yeah, there's been, I, what was it? I think I did another 24 hour video and we said, okay, let's choose this dish. And they sent it out and as we're eating it and we're already talking about it on camera, I stopped and I was like, I can't. <laughs> really? I can't, I'm sorry. And I told them, I was like, I'm so sorry. I just, I really don't like this yeah. dish. Can we really get something else? Wow. Do you Norma has refined that? taste buds. You gotta, you know. That's yeah. true. But do you include that part in the video, in the final video uh, where you say no, that you don't I like don't. it? Okay. I wouldn't. So, okay. but that's kind of why I do like my second channel because maybe I'll include it there and be like, hey, so this is kind of what happened as a behind the scenes. Yeah. We didn't like this, but we, cool. we ordered this. That do reminds you, me of the YouTube battle with like thumbs up and thumbs down when you're just like should we just go find the good stuff or should we actually like thumbs down the bad stuff you know right do you okay so contractually you're not necessarily obligated to say anything positive but you just, i guess not but i mean it's do you disclose you that it. you're paid or it's a sponsorship because for us for example in the finance world like there's no there's no like uncertainty about it you have to tell people that you're paid or that you're it's a sponsor and I have to like open with a sponsor that, hey, this next part is brought to you by X, Y, Z. And then at the end, I have to say like, thank you for sponsoring this portion of the video. And then let's get back to it. Like I have to make it very clear in the beginning and the end that this is a paid segment. Well, it's different because if it's a, a sponsorship that only requires 60 seconds, then yes, yeah. so I'll say like, right. and thank you for the sponsor or whatever, stuff like that. But when I did like Sahara or when I did uh, the one over at Reno, I just hit the the Sponsor check mark thing for YouTube. On, yeah, yeah, yeah. YouTube when you upload, yeah. It comes up in the beginning and that's it. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, because if you upload and then you click that little button, I guess it just has that little pop up mm-hmm. at the beginning of the video that it's promote promote it or promote Yeah, like there's promotions in this video yeah, or something, something like, like that. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, at that point I was like, "Great, right, well then. There you go. Now people know." Have you ever had any crazy invites from subscribers and they're like, "Hey, I have access to this thing. Look, fly to my city." Probably the Cuz I imagine you have up. some crazy subscribers that want to invite you to stuff. Um, I mean, I've been, I've been invited to like, oh, I'm going to go to Palm Springs and I have an extra ticket to go to this comedian. That's like, cool. Stuff like that. But do you ever go out and hang out with like subscribers or people that once in a while, I, it yeah, is, you gotta do it mainly has to be way. a female, yeah. honestly. Right, right. Um, but yeah, cause I don't know. It's a female. You got to trust. Sure. I trust more females. Strings um, attached if it's a dude. Yeah. <laughs> I imagine. I bought you a drink. Give me attention. I'm like, okay, bro. Right. Like, get out of here. But yeah, <laughs> I I've mainly have gone out more with, like, girls. Um, I, I don't think I really have hung out with guys. What if it that? is, like, in a group or something like that. What about that new thing at the Luxor? Is, have you been to that yet? It seems like it's an adult playground oh, or something. Oh, the play? Yeah, is that, I actually Is that did worth a video. it? I've seen some ads. So... Wait, can you tell me what this is? I don't know what this is. Uh, I barely know, but it seems like they've created. Yeah, so I I actually did a video for it uh, like a week or so ago. And yeah, so you pay 
to get in and you get like a certain amount of credits well i did a video on it so they gave me the vip it comes with like a drink a certain amount of tokens and something like that and you have to be 12 in the day you have to be 12 years old or older and then at 5 p.m it becomes 21 and over okay and yeah it's just a whole bunch of like cool little games and like an arcade kind of yeah but they're not regular like you don't see like the the regular arcade games these are like more high-end they're bigger they they're more interactive um i don't know are we talking like ping pong ball games? is it for <laughs> social is it, is it for meeting people does it like force you to like team up with it someone you don't know and like not really oh, okay. i played by myself all the games so you don't really have to play okay. with anybody else hmm. huh. um okay but yeah i don't know i thought it was really cool it is a little expensive because i think how the vip is, is like 95 dollars. oh okay um and how long is it for I think it's like an all day pass. Okay, that's not I think horrible. They have that. Yeah. I mean, they have a lower pass. I think it's like 37 or something. Yeah. But I just I did the sphere know. recently. Disneyland. Yeah. Oh, that yeah. Was, that did was you like nuts. it? Was it crazy? I don't know if I liked it. Like, what it do you was mean? Cool. No, you got to digest it still? No, it was Wait, okay. Was so it you two or was it the, the postcard from Earth? It was postcard from Earth. Oh, I see. Okay. And so I went there. It was for a sponsor that was in town. They were really cool. They took us out to Top Golf and then they were like, oh, let's go to the sphere. And I was like, oh, I've been, always been wanting to go. So I get up there and we get like seats kind of near the top center, like a, like the best seats I think that you could get in there. And instantly I got vertigo. Like the mm. moment that I got in mm, there, I have heard that it was insane. Like I, like my head wasn't spinning necessarily, but I could notice like my heart rate was coming up <laughs> and I was like, this is terrifying cause it's you, because that's it's probably steep. your fear of it's public. So it's so again. steep. Like, yeah. Everyone, it, everyone says that it seems like when, when you like look over, you can like jump and you're going to land like, 300 feet down on top of the person who's like below you yeah it is I, very steep i did feel that and i was like a little scared yeah but then in my head when i was there i was like oh my god i can't imagine how it is for elderly people having right. to come here or yeah someone who is afraid of heights yes. or anything like that's and i felt like i barely made it yeah no i, I might, i'm like i can't take my mom here because i know she would not like it she'd be terrified wow. but but the whole experience itself was really cool even though it was a little bit overwhelming at times for the mm. uh, for the postcard uh, from Earth, because they had like this lightning scene in there, which it just like goes crazy, and it, like it's like blinding you because it's so bright, and the sounds there's like sounds behind you, like the mm, speaker system, oh, it vibrates, vibrates everything, the chairs and everything. It just feels like I'm gonna fall off. It, it was terrifying, but yeah. other than that, <laughs> it was cool to do once. The uh, they have yeah. a fireworks section. Of it. I don't know if you remember it, but I'm terrified of fireworks or That's anything that right, pops they did. balloons. Oh my gosh, and how did you survive that? So what was funny is that when I was there, um, I actually kind of arrived early and I was like one of the first pe uh, people in line to just walk in. And one of the employees recognized me. He was like, oh my God, hey, Norma, whatever. So I talked to him for a little bit and I said, hey, this is my first time coming in. I haven't really heard reviews from anyone else. Is there anything like fireworks or anything I should worry about? And he was like, Yes, there is actually. <laughs> and thank God. And he told me exactly. He was like, okay, you're going to see this scene. And so he kind of prepared me. So when that you happened, I put my camera down and I just closed my eyes. Really? Yeah. Wow. Covered my ears. That, wow. that couldn't have helped much because it's so loud. I, I mean, you could it, it helped me. La, 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 la. I was prepared. Like, <laughs> I was definitely prepared. Yeah, to, for that like scene. helicopter or like. <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually own some of those headphones. I have like the gun headphones. Yeah, yeah. Because like whenever I do uh, like live streams and it has to deal with like New Year's Eve and right. there's fireworks. Oh, yeah, there's just be no I, way to I, hear. I will that makes them. sense. So, yeah. Yeah, would you ever go back to the sphere? Yeah, mm -hmm. I would once it's cheaper. Yeah, it was really expensive yeah. actually. It, it's what is it like one hundred fifty dollars for oh yeah. postcard from Earth, which I is like I an spend, hour. Yeah, three fifty for. It was me and I just, I bought two tickets because I knew I was going to need a cameraman. Yeah. But yeah, I, I bought one for me and my camera girl that day. Yeah, 350 We it, And it wasn't even the best. Right. Yeah. But I, I've heard that like if you go on a Tuesday at 1, 3 p.m., it's like way cheaper. Is it really? Mm -hmm. no, I've never seen the prices be different, but good yeah. to know. know pro tip. Very Do you Vegas. have any other pro tips for like yeah, what are pro tips yeah for cheap vegas things to do oh my god besides the free stuff that's obvious that you can find on your channel like you know bellagio fountains or something but have you found any like cool things in restaurants where it's like oh if you go to this spot at you know happy hour or something i know there's a mm. bunch of those but is there one that sticks out to you that you like going to i mean i feel like everyone knows this one already which is like 
Ocean One Grill, which is over at Planet Hollywood, and they have breakfast for like five ninety nine, something I didn't like know this. that. The Ocean One, of course, bro. Everyone does. <laughs> I didn't know this. Is yeah, Vegas, I feel like every U- every Vegas YouTuber has made a video about this. <laughs> Ocean One. Yeah. In in at the Palms. No, Planet Hollywood. Oh, Planet Hollywood. Yeah. Planet Hollywood. It's in the uh, like the shopping area. Okay. And Miracle Mile. Is the food good? And yeah, I mean it's decent. Okay. Um, it's cheap. Yeah, and I remember. Okay, the first time I ever went there, it was like two, 2010, something like that. So this place has been there for a while, and when I went, it was dead. Nobody was there, and I remember thinking, "Oh my God, this is like so cheap, and it's so nice, and the breakfast was so good." And now, it's lines and lines to get in there. Wow, that's incredible. Because everything else in Vegas is like raised in mm. price, and they're like, "Oh my God, this is actually quite the deal." Yeah. Speaking of restaurants, I actually took my my family to Europe, and one of the first places we went to was Monaco. Yeah, tell us and, about the uh, trip. I was so excited for Monaco because like you see that city in pictures and you're like, this is the coolest thing ever. And it's known for like being the billionaire's playground, sort of like Vegas, but like on another level. And when we got there, we were there for four days. If I had known, I would have only been there for two days because there's nothing to do there other than the casino. And what about meeting billionaires? You don't meet billionaires. And I'm just go, like, hey, Andre, they're, see me on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> they're living in their yachts, which are just parked right in the bay, which is where we stayed. We stayed in an Airbnb right at, in like the center of the bay. So we had like amazing views. But I thought to myself, I was like, there must be a million restaurants around here. There's like three. <laughs> and they're like, oh, just like you said, you're like, oh, just eat from the trough. <laughs> all the billionaires, they have their chefs on their yachts and stuff. And really? the only other restaurants that oh, are wow. there, which I'm sure there's a plenty of, are like the Michelin, you know, style restaurants, which I'm like, I don't want to. There take wasn't like a, a, this is where the locals go or anything like not that. Not really. <laughs> no. <laughs> this is no locals, bro. It's just rich people and the people who serve them. Yeah. Like- there, there's not a huge service industry in that city. Like, there's just not. It's sort of a self sufficient city for the billionaires, and they don't really live there. They just park their yachts there. Mm. And there's like one grocery store that we went to. You should have brought Noah Kagan and just like done some interviews, man. He would have walked that. up and been like, hey, you billionaire, how'd you I, do that? I actually wanted to do that, but my parents were there and I didn't want to just like strand them in the Airbnb. <laughs> so we were there for oh. four days. But the reason that we went is because I took my parents to something called the International Circus Festival, which they hold once a year. Oh. And this was their 50th year anniversary. So think of this event as sort of like the Olympics for, for uh, entertainers. So you can only perform one time in the show in your lifetime with one act. You can perform again if you have a different act, but you have to be invited. So it's like the best of the best of every category from like clowns to gymnasts, dancers, like it's crazy. Was like Cirque du Soleil there or anything? Yeah, it's it's basically people that compete so that they could get contracts to come to Cirque du Soleil. Mm. Uh, And my, my dad actually competed in that show in 1993 and they got the silver clown. It was like second place. And it was it was presented to them by like the the princess, and it, oh. it was crazy. It was really cool. But that's how my family was able to come to America and Vegas because he was invited by Cirque after that event. So I took him to the fiftieth anniversary of that show, so he could be a spectator and like watch. So that's that was amazing. really cool. Yeah, that was a really cool show. Look at um, all the things you've done in your life, dude. It was it was really cool. But I looked up like how long is this show? Because we started at eight, five hours. In the, the morning or at night? At night, from 8 oh. p.m. to 1 a.m. Like, I, I don't know what it is. What, five hours of clowns, performers? Yeah. I mean, but did you pay travelers? a lot? No, Best in they, the world? Well, how much did I pay? I think it was $150 per ticket. Oh, that's like in the middle? nothing. I don't know what it is about Europe, but their shows are at least, at minimum, two hours long. Like, here in the U.S., hmm. we're like an hour, an hour, hour and, and a half, half. max. Yeah. Yeah. What well, the casinos like with Jen show? They're like, hey, like stick to the numbers. Like Dude, we got to yeah. get them back into the casino. Not in Europe. <laughs> in Europe, they're like, I when I pay, I better get two to three hours worth. And they're like, there, there's an intermission where it's like everyone goes to a bathroom break, they get their snacks, and then they come back. And but it was crazy. And then afterwards, yeah. we went to Rome, and then I took them to Paris, and that was a really cool trip. Yeah, I remember we had intermission at David Blaine, and I was like, "What? Really? Like, yeah, remember you were with me? Like, oh, we, dude, we had yeah. that, and I was like, oh, who well, Chris has Angel was there. Yeah. Who has intermission? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's crazy. In the shows, audience, he was. Shows here in Vegas don't really have intermissions. Like, they don't. The, the last show I remember having an intermission was at Mandalay Bay. It, it was both Lion King and Mamma Mia, and that's because the shows were probably like two hour hours. forty-five. Yeah. yeah, two hours, and it was a quick. 
10, yes. 15 minute yes. intermission. Like you barely had time to go to the bathroom. That's true. But besides that, at this moment, I can't think of a show that You're has right. an intermission. You're right. Only musicals, like really long musicals generally. You just call it like the TikTok break so everybody can get <laughs> some short form media in really fast because their brains are like. <laughs> That's true. But yeah, what about. Um, Sounds like a fun trip though. Yeah, it was, it was cool. Do, what about doing a slot channel? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's talk about this because we've been interviewing a lot of slot people and. Dylan, yeah. you started a slot channel. Yep, slot curious. Check it out if you oh, want. Cool. I have, uh, <laughs> like, I have to join the group. You know, it's like clearly, he got FOMO. Yeah, I got FOMO. That's exactly right. But yeah, I mean, I'm doing it. But we talked with Pompsy, and he was like, "Dude, I never saw myself doing slots, but it's just people love that connection to the person, and you have that." So, I so, could see why you went the other route though, and wanted to do a lifestyle channel that gives you a lot of diversity. But also, you know, slot machine channels are like a special thing right now that are blowing yeah, up. Yeah, I so. I know you can make a lot on it, but personally, ever like when I was a kid, we would come here to Vegas with all my family. Nobody in my family gambled, and then I don't know, my family just kind of stuck it into me like, oh my god, like they're wasting their life savings, and it's. And that's not the case for everybody. Like some people, they come and they have a certain amount of money. But there are some people who just kind of yeah. forget, like not forget, but they just kind of like, oh, forget my little stack that I bought. I'm going to all in, you right. know, and then, yeah, they lose it all. And then, damn. So you yeah. don't want to do it because of the, I guess, stigma that your family Kind well, it's, me, it's a bit of that. Like I could lose that because I mean, yeah, I've, I've watched the interviews that you do with them and they're yeah. like, yeah, I'm I'm way low or something like right. that. But to me, I get anxiety gambling. I've never technically have gambled, but when I'm sitting there with my friends and I watch them gamble, I'm like, like, oh. I, I just I can't like maybe like, the pain of loss is worth mm -hmm. too much compared to the See, Norm is my winning. peeps. I can relate. I, that's oh, I yeah, tried it with you yeah. and like I didn't enjoy myself. Like it was more anxiety than fun. And uh, I get that like people can make 30 grand a month off ad revenue, but also just maybe only lose 10K of that a month which balances itself out and they're more in the positive, but like, I don't think I could do that. I just, I wouldn't, that's not the way I want to suffer. Yeah, I do for sure. Just, I get that. Yeah. Yeah. And I've well, heard that they, whenever they're on a losing streak, they, they feel down. Right. You know, even if your overall income is up, but you lost like two grand that day or what? Because you feel it so 10? much more directly. Yeah. You're like, oh, get another hundred dollars out. Another hundred dollars. That must weigh on you emotionally, which would probably translate to everything else in your life, especially like your main channel and your vlog. It's like you'd just be down all the time and you'd have to fake being happy when you just lost 10 grand that day. Right. So that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, I think what you're doing sounds like the ultimate. Since you can build an audience that lets you travel, that lets you experiment, go to different restaurants. Like you're kind of yeah. a foodie, you know. It just seems like that'll be a really good, a I good know. fit and then, for you. Yeah, with the second channel, now if I'm like, oh, I really want to go San Francisco, whatever. Mm. I yeah. can go to in New a York. Sense, yeah, it's yeah. a free. It's a like more of a freedom play. Like your first channel made money, established you. Now this one can be a little bit more, mm -hmm. uh, more pleasurable. I guess to just film like less constrained. This, expense the trip. Yeah, to, yeah to San exactly. Francisco, wherever I go. Yeah. That's really cool. Do you ever yeah. get sick of like the food and the restaurants that you go to? You're like, oh, I gotta go to another restaurant because I feel like I've had. It's rare that it happens, but like one week where I'll go out like every day because someone's in town or a friend wants to hang out and I've been to a restaurant like Too five days in a row. Out, maybe. And I'm like, oh, I'm sick of the restaurants. I've I never just... learned to cook. So that, that like didn't even register to me as really? possible. Yeah. Do you just go out every day? Every day. Yeah. I've never. Where do you guys, where do you <laughs> go? Well, I eat my beans in the morning, you know, two cans of beans. And then I just go to some restaurant for dinner every day or we order like Grubhub. Well, what do you usually get? Like just no, random like stuff? Cali yeah, California pizza kit. Just like whatever. Okay. You know, just, uh, we have a, like a long list of places we go, but. Sure. But I, yeah, but I could go to a restaurant every day and not stress. I remember Vegas Matt spent 365 grand on food. That's right. That's he ate a thousand dollar meal every day of the it's whole crazy, year, but it's comp yeah. from the casino. But. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, um, I don't insane. get sick of the food. Like the food here is great. I mean, I think we have really amazing restaurants. The, and it's not that I get sick of it, but I just have to be careful with how much I eat mm. because oh that's the worry that you eat yeah, too much that I'm gonna yeah I'm gonna eat too much and then I get unhealthy and then I'm gonna you know like gain a little bit, bit of weight and that's I actually kind of did that when I first started my channel I the I gained 15. weight well first of all, <laughs> well it was first of all the the quarantine 15 then the YouTube 15 <laughs> so at like, one whoa, whoa, whoa. point like 
I, I did look at my videos and I, I think I, what was it? I compared myself and I'm like, oh my God. So <laughs> it's a time lapse of me getting, <laughs> getting weight. So yeah, I've I, done that for myself, <laughs> man. <laughs> but yeah, I basically had to stop eating. Like for example, you go to a restaurant and the, the restaurant is excited and they send you so much. Right. And Mm. I, you feel, oh, at first I felt you, bad. Like, Norm is here. Give her the best. Extra butter. Put it all on. Oh my there. god! Right. <laughs> I would eat before. I would eat majority of what they would give me, and then at one point I was like, I need it. No. Yes. Yeah, like down. I'll still eat it for the camera, right. and depending on what it is, sometimes yes, I'll eat you know a few more extra bites. Uh, but I've, you know, I've gone down on how much I eat, and now I don't take anything home. Before, like uh, when I used to live with roommates, oh. I would take stuff home and right. Here, dinner for everyone, you know, but yeah. not, I don't really do oh, that you anymore. You just don't want to be tempted by it, huh? Yeah, and then, I mean, I live alone now, so I'm not really bringing anyone. See, that <laughs> makes sense. So I think that's my problem is like when I went, I, I would order like I usually my go to is just like steak and shrimp or something like surf and turf. And I think if I do that five days in a row or like even two days in a row, I'm like, I can't do this anymore. Like steak is so heavy. And it takes mm, so long to yeah. digest that I just feel sick and disgusting after like two days. Yeah. So I think as long as you no, know true. Yeah. how to pace yourself, it's fine. But well, I think it's all about too about how what you eat at home. So like for example, like so currently right now I'm actually on a, a little challenge. Cleanse, that, yeah. Tell us well, about yeah. That. Okay, so not a cleanse, cleanse, but it's a challenge that I did for myself. So right now, oh my god, it's a lot. Is this for your I'm, blog or just personal? It's a bit of both. I am okay. vlogging it. It's going to be on my second channel. Okay. But it is something I've been wanting to do for a while. So I, I've technically have done it before. I vlogged it, but I just never got to the editing. So I was like, no, I have to do it and edit it and put it out there. Uh, but I'm going, I'm plant-based. It's uh, no sugar, mm. no gluten, um, anti-inflammatory. So meaning like only specific oils. So only like extra virgin olive oil, avocado oil, coconut oil, maybe. Mm. Um, what else? No, sh did I say no sugar? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, no alcohol, no melatonin. Whoa. No melatonin. What's yes. melatonin? Like a pill? No, I know no. what melatonin is, but like what food has melatonin? No, just like don't have melatonin. Oh, don't have sleeping. Because also pills. I have really bad sleep. I've had sleep problems since I was a child, mm. meaning I will go to bed really late. Yeah. And now that I kind of work from home, I still go to bed really late and I wake up 9, 10 a.m. Not horrible. It's not like, you know, but right now that it's winter, it gets dark really fast and I like get sad. I'm like, crap, I had, I, I wasted daylight. So hopefully, you know, not having the melatonin will kind of get me to not depend on it. You and used also, to take that before bed. Sometimes, yes. Yeah. Like so a pill of it or something. I want to not depend on anything to go to bed because either I have to have a glass of wine to go to bed or the melatonin or else I'm falling asleep three, four in the morning. Mm. So if I, I was like, let me see if I could reset my system, something in order so I could help my sleep and then also help the way I feel during the day. Cause I, I'm either really tired. I don't, I don't know. I just don't have as much energy and also my memory. I actually have really bad memory. What keeps you awake at night? Are you ruminating or like thinking about stuff in your head and then yeah. your body won't relax or is it I, more I of a- I think so. I, and I actually need like, like an, the TV to fall asleep. Unless I'm like super tired, then I'll just kind of like go to bed. But if I not, need the TV oh. as well, yeah, because <laughs> yeah, the then your brain on. goes into the show, right? And then you're like, yeah, and then it's kind of like, the, oh, okay. I guess like if if I don't put the TV on, I feel like the thoughts become so intrusive, and you're just like, I'm uh, not gonna. And then you can't sleep. go to bed because you're just because <laughs> you yeah, 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 should get yeah, up and do all these things. So. Yeah, no, I can relate with that. That's fascinating. Why is your memory bad? Because I am also the <laughs> same way. Uh, um, it's horrible, and I've actually figured out throughout my life why it's bad. Mm -hmm. And what I figured out is that our memories are very much tied to our vision. Mm -hmm. My eye vision just sucks. Like I can't see very far. Uh, my prescription is like negative three and a half and negative 3.25 on the other eye. It's like slightly different, but it's bad. And vision has been tied to memory. And so when your vision is sort of blurry. Oh, you think and, you're just making less memory? Less well, well, if you think about like when you dream, sometimes our dreams are kind of blurry. And so when yeah. we wake up, we're like, what did I dream about? You kind of don't remember because it's fuzzy mm -hmm. and it's the same thing when you're in real life if everything's kind of like blurry you kind of you don't remember much because the details are not as super discerning 
Mm. And so for whatever reason, your brain is not creating those memory Dude, connections. When you get the Vision Pro, your memory is going to like kick up, right? Because you'll have all those screens like right by you. I guess. Every I video know. game you'll remember. I just want to get LASIK and just be done with you it. Should. But they I say that. that LASIK has to, you have to be stable for three years before you're a good candidate. And I'm not, I, I'm not mm. going to be stable because I'm always in front of a computer screen. So like my eye vision is always going to decline over time. Oh, That's just yeah. how it is. Uh, I've never so, really heard of it was worth the it. vision be tied to it. Um, I feel like I've had not the best memory like since I was a kid mm. too. Um, but now as I'm getting older, obviously I'm, we're, I'm seeing it get worse um, to a point where I can't remember what I did yesterday. I can't remember like, I was like, oh, let me go on my phone. And I suddenly turn on my phone. Wait, why did I go on my phone? And I know it probably has to do with today's culture, like of, you know, looking at TikTok and everything. But it's gotten to a point where like, I, I want to cry about it yeah. because oh really like it's happened before where like I'm out live stream, so I live stream once a week yeah and I'll meet somebody they'll tell me their name and I forget it immediately I'll see their face and I forget it immediately like one day I was filming too I was at for the video we were at a bus stop and this guy he said hi to me I was like oh hi how are you and like we said hi really quick and I guess we both get on the bus and I happen to sit, sit next to him. And I didn't know that was a person I just said hi to. So, Whoa. yeah, it got to the point where I was like, oh, my God, this is, like, getting bad. And I'm going to get dementia, like, as right. I get older. Right. So I've done, like, a lot of research, seen a lot of documentaries. And I feel like it's, it's related to meat and obviously, mm -hmm. like, dairy and stuff like that. So I'm like, okay, let me get on this diet or this challenge. And, again, I said I did this challenge one other time before. And I had people tell me, wow, you're not really stumbling over your words anymore. You're not like, mm. you know, you're not trying to remember what happened. Like they saw a drastic change in two weeks. So I'm like, okay, let me do it again. Right now it's technically a seven day challenge, but it's because I have a lot of videos coming up that require food and stuff like that. So I'm like, mm. okay, I know for sure I'm not gonna eat anything outside for seven days. Um, and then after that, I'll do my videos, whatever, but I'm going to try to still have that at home. Okay. Yeah. So in, like, I'm going to send you a video in a few days, but I am working on a video that hasn't been released yet that connects, um, HS1, the virus to dementia. And there's a 30 fold increase for people who have had that their entire life. And it put me in this rabbit hole where I found that there's this huge connection between viruses you get at a young age and your increased risk of like dementia and all these other brain neurological disorders. So, um, yeah, and it does seem like meat is playing a big role from what I was researching mm -hmm. too. So I'm I'm a little concerned about that. Well, if you guys figure it out, let me know because <laughs> it, I, I, I don't want to sound like I'm like, oh, but me, but I'm the same way and it, just as bad. Like as everything you're describing, I'm like, that's what I do every day. And it's gotten so bad that when we went to Europe, Corey made a note, uh, like the notes app. She was like writing down all the things my mom, actually my mom was the only one that didn't lose things. My dad and I, how many things we've lost on our trip. There's a, I wish I could just ask her right now, but like it's at least a list of 15 to 20 things that my dad and I lost. Like mm. over the course of this trip, my dad lost a couple hundred euros, like fell out of his pocket, he didn't notice it. I lost like my phone, lost a, like a bag that I just left behind, like a backpack, like crazy stuff when I, I don't know if it's my memory but with all or, that. Yeah. But with all that new stuff in your environment, don't you think that's maybe okay? Like you put something down, your brain is like, where am I? What's that? Maybe, but it's been like that since I was a little kid. Like my parents would just like scold me when I was a kid. Cause they would buy me something like a pair of glasses or a jacket. And then I would just leave it behind and they would just be like, Oh, you don't care about us and the things we give you. And I'm like, I do no, care. I, I just, I like can't forgot. help it. It's just, I can't help it. I try super hard to, be mindful of these things, but I can't. And then my dad and, and I were just doing it back to back this whole trip. And he's just like, okay, I give up. He's like, I do you have anything like Norma was describing with face blindness? Like where you see someone's face and name I, I and then later forget the name, but still see the face or forget both. Um, I don't think I've had it that bad to the point where I met somebody, I sat down and I didn't remember them. But for me, the whole name thing is instantly a problem. Like yeah. it's a horrible problem. So I feel like a name thing's pretty normal, but then sometimes seeing that not seeing the face can be like a different type of memory loss yeah but i'm i've always thought the same thing i was like i'm gonna get dementia like it's almost guaranteed at this point yeah. like if i would i would be shocked if i don't i really do think Aww. it's what we eat for sure because mm -hmm. yeah i mean again all the studies everything that's shown how like 
meat and all this other stuff affects you and it's like if you go plant-based you can kind of almost heal yourself right so the, the, i mean are you referencing like a book or what, like where are you getting that information from Cause um, i've, I've the seen same thing, a lot I'm of curious. documentaries like on netflix like i literally just saw one last night i think it was it's like a twin experiment it's yeah. i think it's like you are what you eat a twin experiment so we're like they test both twins one has a plant-based diet one has a meat-based diet and they check everything like their mental state their physical state everything um, and I forget some, I think one was called like the game changers, um, yeah, game just other changers. stuff that's, yeah. um, on Netflix and mm. other videos. So that's where I, ma- yeah. I mainly get it from. I like, I, I was reading a book. It was written by Dr. Gregor and it's called how not to diet. Oh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. it was like, I and he has a right. nutritionfacts.org, And I've, yeah, I feel like a lot of good research and oh, that's really cool. coming out. I'll of have that. to look into that. Yeah. The only time, the only reason that I haven't given up on myself is I'm like, maybe my memory's not bad. Maybe it's just, I'm so one track mindedly focused on things. Like I'll be editing yeah. and Corey's like, That's what I think. Hey, your food's been up there. I'm like, what it has? She's like, yeah, I came in and told you food was ready like an hour ago. And you were like, yeah, we had a conversation. I was like, I don't remember that. Yeah. And it usually happens when I'm super focused on something. It's like the world around me disappears. And that's why I'm like, is it my yeah, memory that's, or is that's it? That could be a strength. Though. I mean, I, when I come over here to film and you're still editing, yeah, you don't like instantly just be like, hey, Dylan, it's like you have to like get out of that. Dude, yeah. Or, yeah you're like, OK, let me start moving this ship around, you yeah, know, and it's then after slow. like 10 minutes now, you're like present in this. Yes. This like podcast. It's it's bad and it can be good, too. So I'm like, I don't know if it's a memory or if it's just like a focus thing, I, you know, I are you hyper focused? I, I have the opposite way. I can't focus for too long. Oh. So like, for example, my, the videos before I used to edit it myself. Um, and it just got to a point where I took way too long to edit them. And I had no time to plan out other videos or respond to emails, whatever it was. Um, so that's why I ended up having to get an editor because I'm like, it's taken me for a 15 minute video 30 hours Mm -hmm. and that's so many other things I could do with that time so I got an editor uh, because yeah I would edit and then I do my thing and I'm like okay I have to do something else or uh, I would get a text message and then 10 minutes passed by because I look at the Mm -hmm. text message oh I got a thing on Instagram oh I got something on TikTok whatever it was and it just I couldn't focus and that's why it would take me so long too to edit Mm -hmm. so I think I have the opposite I don't have very good focus as well so hope being that like you know once I do the challenge and everything it'll help me with my focus as well let me know if it if it helps you because I'll do the same challenge like I challenge you to do my challenge yeah (laughs) Yeah. can you you give up on meat for a couple weeks yeah I don't the only thing I does does that include chicken because that's really the only meat I eat yeah Yeah. (laughs) It's not red meat. I can which bring you I some imagine. cans of beans. Like I'll give you enough beans to cover. Dude, the Dude, I would love that. I'll try your beans because <laughs> you gave us like some magic beans or something. You were like, these okay, beans well, are po, po. banned. Not on camera, bro. Oh, like sorry, that's sorry. a whole different. The magic beans the are, are different. Beans. <laughs> I was like, what? Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, I know, mean, pinto edamame, all that. Sure. Stuff. It's all good. Yeah, I would love to know your recipes because <laughs> I don't understand how a human being can eat beans. As much as you do, unless you had like a variety. I of do. I got it. I got all figured out. Dude, I got dozens of spices. I got different different Dude, oils. Like, oh yeah. Okay. Dozens of beans. Okay. I, I got it. Yeah. I'm down to try that. <laughs> okay. I mean, all right. I'll, I'll get his. Right? I'll get his memory back on track. <laughs> we'll be good. I think. I don't even think you have a problem to start with, but we'll we'll try it. <sighs> okay. I mean, wow. start slow. You don't necessarily have to like just cold turkey or yeah. like I like I say cold tofurkey. Oh, yeah, tofurkey. Yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> but that no, is kind of Andre's just style. He likes to just do it. I do. Yeah, I just dive in, man. I can't do half ass. Yeah, it's so like personally, like one of a, one of the things is no sugar. I don't really care for sugar. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. Like to me, I'll smell a donut and I want to gag. So to mm-hmm. me, I don't have a problem giving up sugar. Yeah. But if you if there are like things you got to substitute, like for example, this morning I had overnight oats and I just had like a coke, uh, like a vanilla yogurt that's made out of coconut. Like mm-hmm. that still kind of has like that's natural good. sugars in it or like coconut sugar. You can substitute things for that, but you mm-hmm. don't have to have like white sugar can on, do honey? on everything. Um, I personally, I mean, I do a little bit, but. Does that count yeah. as sugar or no? Um, I mean, it's like kind of like sugar. But some people are going to say, well, technically that's not vegan because bees made it. You know? Yeah, because yeah. oh, okay. yeah, it was an, another animal who did I, it. But, but if but it's, it's for memory, it's more just about <laughs> like the overload of processed sugar. Uh, yeah, that's true. I don't know, like an apple or something is going to taste great. Yeah, that makes sense. I, I remember trying fiber. to go vegan once and 
the first thing I realized about, about trying to be vegan is how expensive it was to be vegan. I was like, mm -hmm. how does that make sense? I was like, how is eating healthy so much more expensive oh, yeah. than having junk food? Like you'd think it's the no, other way around. The food doesn't sit on the shelf for two years, you know? Like it's, I guess. it's more expensive to and ship and. Produce. I don't know what it is. I don't think I did it right because I was buying those like frozen meals that are like advertising their veganness. Oh. Yeah. And I just got sick from it. I was like, this, yeah, this isn't healthy for you. Man. So I wouldn't do those. Like I. Like in this challenge, I'm not having any meat substitutes. I, it's just. No, why is that? Is that because it's processed and bad well, for yeah, you? Yeah, it's or? processed. Like sometimes, like an, I mean, I don't know if it's specifically like the Impossible Burger, but other ones that are meat substitute. You look at their ingredients, you're like, oh, this is kind of like right. It's yeah. horrible. Yeah. Yeah. Just, no. we're, yeah, it's all fake stuff. It's, yes. So I'm not. So what's doing like the like real that. way to be vegan? Like what's a, what's a sustainably healthy? don't kill yourself kind of a way to be vegan like what's the recipes I mean, what are some you just gotta like substitute for real food like like chickpeas or i, I mean I yeah, guess what do you have what, what would you have for Cheese. breakfast Cheese. what would you have for breakfast Chick then? Peas. peas okay <laughs> okay we got that peas what are you for having peas, but for yeah. like lunch or like garbanzo beans um, <laughs> garbanzo, so actually, different types of beans <laughs> that's, what, that's basically unfortunately what had to happen to me i was like that's the only thing that's left that's like filling you yeah potatoes, i've actually gotten into potatoes, ratatouille popcorn. I love ratatouille. Okay. I made it once. Ooh. Okay, so ratatouille, um, I mean, I've kind of made my own recipe in a sense, just doing it over and over. Um, it is time consuming though. Do you slice it into the little like- I do. Oh, okay. That's I do, it's, it's so cute. But um, it's time consuming. So sometimes what I do, I just take the exact same ingredients, chop them up, put them in a pan, a little olive oil, onion, garlic, and it's just a bowl of ratatouille. That's nice. And no oven is needed and all that stuff. That's good. Okay, so that's that's a good one, but it just takes for yeah, it takes forever to make. Um, I get I don't know like yeah, what's like food time. that's potatoes? potatoes. Look at me being so quinoa, Russian. <laughs> potatoes. Um, what's it called? Cabbage, purple cabbage. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. The more okay. colors, the better berries. If you can throw some blueberries in there. Okay. Well, and I have a bunch of nuts too. Just it walnuts. just seems so like not filling. I, I don't know what it is, but I guess I'm so dependent on just like chicken and just. Yeah, so I mean, you, me too. You are right. It's not, not that it's not filling. You just get hungrier faster. Yeah, you do. So you need to be able to be also ready with good snacks. Like, for example, I think there's this company called Siete, and they have better for you snacks. Like, for example, um, pork rinds. That I mean, that's still I love pork meat, rinds. You know? But they have a, a, a pork rind kind of lookalike. But it's made out of, I think it's like lentil flour and i taste it and i'm like dude this tastes just like a pork oh, rind and i yeah. actually got like a whole bowl put lime chile on is it, it like 20 dollars a bag no it's not <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> or you can make noodles out of zucchini or beans and oh, then, it, then it tastes yeah. like pasta you can throw some tomato sauce on it and you're like, like oh, it's kind of like spaghetti thingy. or whatever but you're really just eating a vegetable you know pen Gillette lost all that weight just eating potatoes did he really yeah like i read his book it's all potatoes that's the only thing he ate the, oh. for like month after month after but, month but and he, that weight just melted is off that healthy him. though yeah, well, the way he documented it, it seemed like there was <laughs> some, some unhealthy aspects yeah, to right. it, but, but he, but it worked, you know, and it was, I, 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 I it's do, the most filling vegetable, I guess. I do want to try it. Like, I want to give it a good try now that like I have enough of an income to where I can be a good vegan. Cause like <laughs> it, you can't be a, broke no, that's vegan. like, that's like the short right there. Like I now have enough income to be a good vegan. You, you can't be a broke vegan, man. It's like products are like, they just put <laughs> vegan on it and they're like. Just double the price. Vegan and Oreo. then especially since you basically work from home, you can come up to the kitchen at any I time. Could, yeah. Just make what that you That would make. be the hardest part. Is that tempting? Just having food right there? Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. Well, Corey helps me with stuff, with food, but I do get like Uber Eats from time to time. I love Indian food. Like I love Thai food. Oh, yeah. I just love curries. Some naan and some Dude, garlic. How like, could, could you not love naan? naan. Gomai, you gotta... So yeah. what, are your weak what is the weakness that you... Because it sounds like sugar is not the problem. Is it fried um, food or is there I mean, pizza butter is or something? <laughs> yeah. Bread, yeah. Yeah. bread food, Pizza. Bread food, yeah. um, like yesterday, I was thinking about In-N-Out for a second. <laughs> that was so good. Um, yeah, I think. Oh, bread and butter. I love bread. And just give me like a baguette and some soft Anytime butter. Corey cooks. Mm. And you know how you start with maybe? like on a pan, you like butter and like salt and garlic. I'm like, mm, what are you cooking? It's like slow down. It's, <laughs> it's, it's just, it's just butter. I enjoy the pan yeah. at this point. Like, it's so good. <laughs> Andre oh comes God. over, just spoons out the butter. It's tasting great. Dude, no, when we were in Paris, it was foie gras every day. Like just. Oh, my God. Every day. Foie gras is kind of intense. It is, but it's so good, though. 
I love it. I don't know. Maybe it's just the European. What's the, isn't there a par- Paris paradox or the French paradox? Did you notice that like people are skinny, but they all eat bread all the time? Really? Oh. Maybe it's a, the way know. they make the bread or something. I, I think it's because like the lifestyle. Or they something. walk more, maybe. Mm-hmm. I think they walk more, uh, but also everyone in Europe I've noticed, especially in Paris, smokes. Like oh. everyone has a cigarette in their mouth. Oh, still? I thought that was like from ten years ago. No, everyone has a cigarette in their mouth. It's insane. I don't get it, but yeah, it's a cultural no. thing, I guess. I mean, I don't want to try that. <laughs> no, yeah. So you don't, you don't. But actually, we do see each other at the gym. At uh, we go to a place. Yeah. Called and I'm always like, where, where are you at, Norma? Together? Let's go. Uh, yeah, it's like this. Uh, You're, uh, yeah, gym buddies. Sometimes. Like, uh, it, it's like one Sometimes we'll end up in the same class yeah. um, on accident. Or I'll, he'll come out and on I'll accident. be coming into like the class after him. You should yeah. schedule it. Yeah, you could be accountability buddies. Well, I feel like Norma's thing, like you're kind of random with it, right? Like kind of, you're not yeah. super like all like that this day I got to be there. Right. Like I was there in the morning yesterday. Today I might go later at night or okay. maybe not at all because I have a video to put out tomorrow. I have, a, I have a Norma Jelly. No, no, no. Life of a Norma Jelly video to put out tomorrow morning. Okay. So I have to edit that. Corey and um, I are going to go to a class at 430 actually. I don't know what time it is right now, but we do have. <laughs> three oh sweet okay we're good yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. i kind of like those workout classes because someone else is telling you what to do yeah, and you're, you're not trying to figure it out dude i can't like typo yeah. in there he goes punch 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 yeah i can't work out by myself <laughs> i can't motivate myself enough yeah. to push myself to where i think i need to push myself to. yeah that's true I, I, that's a problem yeah. i have and too i go to the gym well, it's just not the same yeah, yeah. well they're like you're not allowed to have your cell phone at, i mean you're right. supposed to put it away because sure. then yeah like people you'll you'll do your set and then you'll you look be at like, your phone oh, for me, 10 yeah. minutes to recover and, and then all like, of a sudden yeah, yeah you're right true. 10 minutes have passed by that's true what for, are some of the strategies you use to get your videos up on time because it's a lot of effort to manage two channels and like not get distracted like, oh man i'm trying i'm trying tips. really hard to get ahead i'm trying really hard like for example how far this scheduled lo- out are you like not um at all. so right now like I, the video that's going to come out this Friday is already like recorded. Okay. Mm-hmm. It was, it's been recorded. It's basically already edited next week's video. I think I just have one more place I have to go film at. And then the week after that, I have one place I've filmed and I'm just waiting to make sure everyone oh, that's is nice. mm-hmm. ready. So I'm trying to get ahead. It's just so hard yeah. because like, for example, last week I filmed at nine no, eight locations plus my live stream. So every day I had something to do. Hmm. So it was just really hard. And because I'm so concentrated on the things I have to film, I don't have any more mental space to plan out future videos. Hmm. So now that I filmed all those places, I'm like, oh crap, now I have to, you know, schedule out more videos for the future. Yeah. So it's it's a lot. Dude, that's like when I first met all you guys that are YouTubers and um, started to get some insight into what a, the entire friend group of YouTubers do, I was so surprised that almost everybody is like one week ahead at most. I was like, Dan, like comes up with the video like three days before it goes. Andre is just like, I'm filming it Monday. It's got to go Wednesday, except Graham. Graham was like, oh, yeah, like two months ahead on both channels. I'm like, oh, God, I wish. No, I feel not like anymore. he's the only one. No, not anymore. I don't think so. Oh, I know with his um, Ice Coffee Hour, they're like quite a bit ahead. Yeah, with podcasts it's easy but with his main channel i don't think so i think mm. he's lucky to be one week ahead usually but spencer's not that far ahead usually yeah it's just I'm hard not, because yeah because you have to be on, on top of like current events like especially in the finance world we're so cyclical and it's like oh well today this week this is relevant and then next week it won't be and there's very few things you could do yeah that you really have to because you have to live in that conversation yeah. and that conversation happens when it happens and yeah you gotta do it that way yeah that's that's true but yeah. in theory, yours could be a little bit further ahead because it, it's not it like be, you yes. don't have to do like news. You could like go to a restaurant and cover their food whenever right. you want. Yeah, like a few weeks ago, I released one called Best Speakeasies. And mm-hmm. that one I had filmed the like the first week of January and it didn't come out till the last week of January. Yeah. So that one was. Yeah. So certain things like that are. Yeah. pretty easy but it's also natural it's just part of your life i guess just to cover it and then upload it and see how people react and then do I guess the next so, video yeah. it's just hard going on vacation like i haven't yeah. gone on a real vacation in such a long time it took me like, four years yeah yeah like i think last year i went to napa for two days so two nights and i had to like come back and it was like a mm. last minute decision like besides that i probably was your Europe trip a real vacation or did you have the urge to like film things no while you were i there? disconnected i was like oh, Screw that's good. It. i don't care yeah oh, i that's disconnected good. Yeah. so it really felt like yeah a, re- felt, a reset yeah exactly that's it was nice. super helpful 
but I think I can scale down to one a week because I post twice a week. So it helps to do one a week. I was like, you know what? Instead of posting two a week, I'm just going to carry it over to next week and be fine. And you could see a little drop in numbers, but well, yeah, it's but not a big point, deal. You've got a thing moving. So yeah, yeah, it's not a big deal. Yeah. You definitely need a lot of discipline. It was like, it's going to go out, like for me, on Fridays. It's going to go out on Friday. There's no, yeah. like, a, a, like for Do example, you, I have sponsorships that are like, uh, can you push it back like a day? Nope. No. Yeah, no. No, nope. I can't. Like if, okay, if you're not ready, I'm taking you out of the video. Same, that's what I, I do. I'd rather have a video on time than to have. Me too your sponsorship yeah exactly wow. i do the same thing if they want to get cha- like changes done and it take two days to respond i'm like okay you're out mm-hmm. i'll save you for next week if you know if anything but yeah like i had one where i didn't have any other video to post and they're like can you actually push this for next friday nope I'm sorry yeah do you, when you go out to like the restaurants and you do your videos do you are you pretty like self-aware or cognizant about trying to enjoy the experience because i feel like for guys like Casey Neistat, I imagine like all these vlogger lifestyle type of people, like their life becomes their job and it's hard to separate, especially for their significant others to be like, are we enjoying this us or are you <laughs> kind of like doing it for work? And I imagine you can lose yourself in the work if, you know, like you go out to restaurants, you're kind of supposed to enjoy it, but also you're doing it as a job. So it's like, it, it's good to have a healthy balance between being like, I need to enjoy it here, but I also need to finish the work. Mm. I think when I'm filming, it's more, it's definitely more work for me. And yes, I mean, I'm not having like a bad time. It's cool and all, but I'm not thinking about, oh, I'm here to have fun. Right. No, it's like, I'm here to work, right. do my thing. And then there's times where like I finish doing it. And then because let's say a restaurant, I had like a bite of this, bite of that, whatever. And now that I'm finished, I could technically eat the rest. I'm so full <laughs> because like, I like, you know, my right. stomach has had food in it for a while that I'm just like, I kind of like, I'm, I'm good now. I don't really want to eat more. <laughs> yeah. I know that one time you told me a story when you were trying to like kind of herd the cats to help your video and like people weren't doing it. And you're like, listen guys, we're here to do something like come into the camera, like get this done. Like, this oh, is my yeah. job you <laughs> know? like I, like we're not just playing like when you bring people yeah with you, whenever you have to remind yeah them, whenever like, i do my here. my parodies yeah so i've done like girl like a, a girl's trip a bro's trip where i dressed up as a guy i did a adam's family video where i was wednesday and all of my other friends had morticia gomez that's really so cool. forth but um obviously you know they're all like oh this is fun we're having we're trying to have a good time and some of them like do understand like hey this we're here for a job but at some point i have to like get in director mode and be like, all right, all right, stop, stop, right. sit, sit. <laughs> Too or much like fun. they're they're talking amongst Harness each other it. and they start laughing and like, okay, stop and action. <laughs> like, <laughs> right, right. Because then if if I'm not like that, it's gonna take double the time. Yeah. To yeah. to get something filmed. What's your favorite video that you've ever filmed? Oh man, like parody wise. Any video. Oh uh, man, I mean the 24 hour videos are pretty fun because we have a lot to do. Um, like Cosmo, when we did Cosmopolitan, that was really fun. Uh, when we did Flamingo, uh, the 24 hours of Flamingo, we actually got a, uh, a massage. And I think for Palms we did too. I'm not, yeah, sorry, my memory. Can't really remember. Um, that was pretty cool. Um, man, bro, I think it was the bachelor, bachelor party where I dressed up as a guy too. That was kind of cool because we went to... Um, that was a cool video, yeah. Yeah, that, where, where did we go? IU? IU Day Club, we mm-hmm. went to that. Oh, we did, uh, uh, we drove ATVs? No, they're not ATVs. I think they're called UTVs or something like okay. that. But we went to uh, Valley of Fire and we drove those around. That was really fun. That's cool. It was that a little scary because I'd never dro- driven one. Yeah. Um, oh, and then like another one that should be coming out soon. Um, they're kind of a newer company, but you can off go off-roading in a Ford Bronco. Whoa. Yeah. So, and I really want a Bronco. So when uh, my friend, she's a concierge, she said, Hey, we just got an offer to go and do these, uh, this off-roading thing with Broncos. I know you really want a Bronco. I was like, yes, I'm there. So that was like my first time driving one. And uh, I'm like, Oh, I kind of want one now. That's cool. Oh, that'd be fun. ATVs. I think I have a phobia of ATVs. Oh, I would have guessed you'd love that. No, man. I I went once like when I was love driving, like you just love cars and stuff. I do. But but when I was was, like 23 years old, I went out in the desert and Vegas and they had like ATVs and we were going through the dunes and I don't know what it was, but I, I was going really fast over like a bump, over a speed bump, and the ATV dropped really fast, right? So I'm still in the air, like picture that, right? I'm kind of in the yeah, air yeah. momentarily, it drops, and then there's a bump like 
right after. So the ATV goes boom, boom. It just like goes down and up really fast. Oh, so it jerked you. It it went into my like spine. Like it oh, hit me no. so much that my I felt it in my spine. I had to stop and I was like, I was in so much pain. I couldn't continue. Do like, you think maybe mm. it was because you were in a group and you had to follow them? Like if you it, had your I was own following, yeah. ATV and you're like, oh, I'm going to ride at the speed that I feel comfortable with. Maybe, would you do it? I don't know if it's that or if it was like the the shocks or something it would if they weren't like soft enough or if i just made a bad mistake that was like a rookie move i don't know what it was but they just scare me now i'm just like i don't want to get injured mm. no that makes sense yeah, yeah, yeah i had like, a back injury skiing and I, like it took it freaked me out for a while too right? yeah, that'll get to you man it will yeah if you have one bad experience like okay i'm done with that <laughs> well, yeah yeah it's kind of like um whenever i do the zip lines zip lines are cool and all but every time I get nervous, like this could go wrong at yeah. any second. Or when I did, and I feel like I talk about this all the time, when I did the the jump from the strat. I can't believe oh, you did that. Wow. That's insane. That yeah, one, that's crazy. I, I've never felt panic that's like the way I did in the first Vegas, like two seconds sure. of jumping. After I jumped, um, I was just like, I, I just never felt that... It was like a negative adrenaline. Right. Like it wasn't like, oh my God, this is so fun. This was oh. like, I'm going to die any second now. Right. Because it just, it, it did not feel adrenaline? good. negative adrenaline? You mean you fold it up? No, no, no. Negative as in like it was a negative experience. People oh, when they oh, talk about adrenaline, like, like hey, it's so cool. I was like, no, this was the bad right, adrenaline. Right. So you'd never so, go again. I don't think so. <laughs> but I mean, at the same time, I used to say I would never do that. Yeah. And then I ended up doing the right it video. I would definitely never do that ever. Like bungee jumping. I, I, would, I don't think I would, I would rather yeah. jump out of an airplane than bungee jump. Oh, heck no. I would never bungee jump or do an airplane. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, no. airplane seems scarier than bungee cord, but they both sound scary. What was like your most negative experience that you've ever had uh, filming or interaction wise? Or have you ever had anything that you were like, oh, this mm. was horrible? Okay. So there was one video that we had like a guy that kind of set up everything and because he wanted me to kind of promote his company and in the end like in in the middle of it he kind of just changed his mind like um okay i don't want you to do that last piece and that last piece wasn't through him necessarily it was through like a different company because we were going to do his part and then we were going to go somewhere else and he was like i don't want you to do that somewhere else and i was like well first of all i set that up with that other company not with you and he just didn't want it and we ended up everyone ended up like almost yelling at each other in the middle like in public wow and yeah, so that was really bad. And I was, and at this point, um, I had other people with me in the video. And they're like, maybe we should end the video here. And because I was not ahead in videos, I was like, I can't. I have no video to post this Friday if this doesn't come out. Right. And because I was more worried about posting something, I was like, okay, we're going we're gonna to pivot like this. But yeah, for us to be like arguing in public like that, it was, that was not good. Wait, so how did it resolve? Yeah. Did you end up doing the thing or did you skip it? Uh, no, I, I, I did it. You did it. Yeah, we're through, you know. Yeah, and obviously, no like, charge, we, I was supposed done. to do more um, with this person, like, in the video. But at this point, he kind of, like, cut his part of it. I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm going to cut, like, the rest of it. Could you tell in the video, like, that was something was not right? or No. Oh, that's good. No, because I... I refuse to have any it's like drama. in TV shows when one character just gets like written out. I don't, like you obviously they quit and you're just like, okay, there's the Vex, like some weird Vex story. It's like, wow, you really changed. Like, so, yeah. but yeah, that that was probably the most like negative one I ever dealt with. That's okay. I don't think I've had any crazy ones like that. I'm just like by myself. Yeah, you've never just had some walk out on the middle of your set. Oh, the worst thing that happened to Rito me is like came I, and interrupted you. I lost my Rito, voice, get out of here. and I was like, I can't not upload a video. So my entire video was me writing on a chalkboard really? or on a, on a with a marker. I was like, here oh, you go, and I then I would it. just erase it and, and write it. And editing that was a pain in the ass because like imagine like cutting out <laughs> all of those bits so I didn't bore my audience just doing this and like erasing. Oh my it. gosh, I didn't. Know but that. I was committed, man. That's I, in your back catalog I did, somewhere. Yeah, it's like one of my <laughs> third or fourth videos or fifth videos. I got so sick. I lo literally lost my voice. Could not speak. I was like, I can't not upload. <laughs> so I did. Oh, well, that's when you were back. I feel in, like, like I've seen a video of you yeah, sick. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. Yeah. No, I feel. I feel like I saw a video of you with like you were probably sick and you had kind of a raspy voice, but you did it anyway. Yeah, I've had that. I've had that. Uh, it was bad, but yeah. Oh Life yeah. A YouTuber. For well, at least with you, you are. 
at home and you're yeah. not really around anyone. But whenever I've gotten sick and I have to pretend I'm not sick. Jeez. And I have to like just and then sometimes I'll, I'll say my line and then I'm like, Ugh. wow. You know? And like I because again, just I just I have good. to do a video. Yeah. You know? So no, I feel like you, your stuff is very, very difficult to produce, especially like if it's cold or if it's like, like it doesn't matter what's going on. You have to be a warrior and go out there and just like make videos. I know, especially especially when it's hot too. You're yeah, like, when it's summer Vegas, boy, oh, oh my, my God. gosh, yeah. And I try to save. Oh yeah, my... what about armpit sweat? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? You don't want to be lifting your arm up. Well, like for example, the the video that's gonna come out soon is like in things to do outdoors. I'm doing this now in February, so I don't have to do it in summer. Yeah, that makes you sense. Know? Right. Oh, that's smart. So certain things you gotta like. Do you think you'll ever out. run out of content? You're just like, like, what do I do next? And like, how do I come up with ideas? Do you use ChatGPT to be like, hey, One I'm a Vegas YouTuber. <laughs> Can like come up for stuff for me to do? Uh, ChatGPT is helpful. 10% of the time, have I you? have I have used them once in a while, and then I'm like. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Like they'll, I'll say like, help me come up with this title. And then they'll give me 10 examples. I'm like, okay, I'm going to use that word. And then this ending word. And then, I'll, you know, right. so it'll, it'll kind of help me at least brainstorm a little bit. Have you ever um, asked it through the context of you? Like pretend you're Norma Jelly or mm, have you done that? No, I haven't. You've never done that? No. Oh, you got to try that. Oh shoot. Okay. Yeah. You're probably famous enough that it knows you. Yeah, it should. If, if it's cause when was, was the date of 2022? 2023 is the newest update. Oh, so yeah. it definitely knows who oh. you are now. You've okay. been, you've been indexed and like, I've, I've done that for myself. I'm like, you are Andre Jake, the YouTuber having a conversation with so-and-so like write a funny script and then it would just do it in the context of me. And like, it would just like oh, do magic cool. tricks or whatever. And I'm like, that's cool. Okay. I got to try that. Yeah. Um, as for running out of ideas, I don't know, like in 2022, I thought I ran out of ideas, but yeah. here I am two years later still making yeah. videos. Vegas is and always changing. And we it is, it, it is always changing. And, and always I, have our own I still have a lot of like more parodies that I want to do because I feel like that's yeah, kind of my thing. Parodies. There's so many more 24 hour, like videos I need to do. Um, so I, and I've seen other friends that are also travel, not travel, but like they'll do their own YouTube videos in New York or other places and they're still going after six years. So yeah. I feel like it's definitely possible, but thanks for the second channel I have. If I want to, if that ends up getting big too, then I'll just do more there. Are you happy with the growth so far? Yeah. yeah it so like I, really well. yeah. right now, so the way I label them on my like hard drive is it's LNG, so Life of Norma Jelly. I'll put like LNG 16. So right now I'm on episode 16, so meaning four, it's in four months. And I'm at like 12,000, almost 13,000 subscribers, yeah. which is pretty That's good. That's great. Yeah. So you I'm, promoted a lot on your other social, or how did you, how much um, effort did you put into growing it's, it? So you know how, like, at the end of the, your video, you can put like your channel, a uh, video it recommends. So I put, that second channel too. And then also on my live streams, I talk about it a lot. So yeah, I definitely like, you know, crossover. That's, That's cool. cool, yeah. If I did a second channel, it'd be like reviewing people's portfolios. I mean, I could make it as part of my mm -hmm. main channel or like making fun of like Reddit posts. Oh, like a little bit of a reaction. There's, yeah, I, I'd like to be more edgy and like the comedy be more me. Cause like I'm really PG, but I think there's so much more opportunity to be like hilariously funny with not PG uh, and <laughs> seeing how stupid people are with money, including myself, you know, people make mistakes and just like looking at Reddit stories, horror stories, people buying stupid shit. Is there like enough just... content for like a, for oh my a gosh, yeah. Really? Oh, okay. my God. Yeah. It's insane. It's hilarious. Like I'm sure you could find someone who bought tickets to the Super Bowl and then no, that's what, you know, that like... or just like buying stocks they shouldn't or reviewing people's portfolios or just like the things they say. And like, even looking back, like if I'll make a video now, I'll still do like Reddit. I'll make fun of them. But they'll be like, oh, this is the best stock. What do you guys think? And they'll do all these like complex analyses. And they'll be like, this is an undervalued, underrated stock. Buy into it. And then like a year later, yeah, it's like they're like bankrupt. <laughs> it's just it's like, like a terrible idea. So, but so like much a... of your like thesis, right? Like, <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's like we've all gone through it. It's just it's funny. But oh, okay. the only reason I'm asking is because whenever people tell me like, oh, I want to create a YouTube channel and then I say, okay, well, whatever niche you choose, just make sure you can create 200 videos out of that. Because I've had people tell me, um, just an example, like, oh, I want to do a channel that's all about the history Beans. of downtown Las Vegas. And I'm like, okay. 
that might get you 10 videos. I don't know. Right. It's just in my head. I'm thinking like, is this, are you doing this for fun or are you trying to become right? Like, is this your wannabe career? Right. Then I was like, okay, you want for fun. Great. Do you get people asking you that a lot? Like your friends or people like, Um, by the way, way, I I can get 200 videos out of a bean channel. A bean. I believe it. Like there's so many things to talk about with beans. I even think you can do it from the Vegas swing. Like I can probably come up with 200 video ideas, but it would have to be like, more tangential and not necessarily like on like how we th- how you and I might think of like a documentary style, but like going to places and recreating them. I don't know. Like it's possible, but I see what you're saying. But do you think like do do a lot of people ask you uh, like, hey Norma, how do I do YouTube? Like uh, you once advice? in a while, but I mean I'm not really a YouTube maker guru, right. so sometimes I'll just send out a vid the videos I watched to start my channel. So I was oh, like, well, this those? is where I got That's my, cool. uh, my advice from. So here, watch these exact same videos. And who, who's that? Who inspired um, you? So like, like film booth and there's stuff, this or? one girl, her name is Catherine Manning. And back like when it was 2019 into 2020, she mainly had like, okay, this is how you start your YouTube channel. This is the analytics. And so I kind of just watched hers and then that's how it helped me. Have started. you ever reached out to her? No. Okay. No, just cause. I don't know. Like, what do I even say? (laughs) Like, hey, you helped me create my channel. She probably gets thousands of those, you know? Okay. So. Doesn't hurt. No, yeah. That's nice. All right. Well, so people check out your other channel. They can go find you at this. Wait, say it again. Life of a Norma Jelly. Yeah, Life of a Norma Jelly. Let's try that again. (laughs) Yeah, let's do that again. So people can check you out on Life of of a Norma Jelly. Let's try that third time. Why don't we? (laughs) So people can check you out on Life of a Norma Jelly, your new channel. And then, of course, your original Norma Jelly. Thank you, Jelly. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks for chatting with us. Okay.